Hello. Uh, yes, please. Assalamu alaikum. Well, I've been thinking over and over again whether to put this question forward to you or not. It's on the subject of the power of the mind. Is the sub subject? <coughs> Would you come closer to the microphone and uh, speak a bit loudly? Oh, is is the subject of the power of the mind? Uh, the human mind has such powers that one does not know. For instance, one can transfer thoughts by mind and pick up thoughts. Because I have read quite a few books on this. <laughs> and, um, I've talked to some people and they demonstrated to me that I was quite amazed. So I would, uh, I would be obliged if you could put your point of view on this subject, please. Do you mean that if somebody is thinking, his uh, thoughts can be conveyed to others? That's right, yeah. Is that what you mean? Definitely. On that I have already spoken a few days ago on this topic. The fact is that it is not only possible, it, it is a demonstrable, demonstrable fact. And the scientists nowadays who are called para-psychologists and the psychologists disown them and say they are not scientists, they are quacks uh, and call themselves scientists. But they have been accepted now in the world and in collaboration with uh, some great physicists, among them some Nobel laureates, they have proved certain facts which were considered to be just myths before that. And among them is the fact that the mind is powerful enough to convey its thoughts to others. And some minds are powerful enough to receive and catch thoughts of others. And this happens in a manner as the man of today cannot explain how. Because science has not advanced to this day as to find out forces other than the physical forces of radiation etc. known to them. But they know this, this happens. And it, even at large distances, I will tell you a very interesting uh, experience, my personal experience, <coughs> which happened in London long, long ago. In those days, because we didn't indulge in the, in the no, common pursuits of most of students from our country, we used to organize uh, intellectual parties, interesting parties, sometimes there were all night parties. Uh, groups who were interested in intellectual talks and things, people would, uh, the, the host would uh, provide them with food for the whole night and they would sit and talk and discuss and sometimes have days and so on. So once I attended an all night party in Hampstead and uh, there various discussions were taking place, this also came up whether somebody can through the power of your mind, can convey things to others or can receive uh, mental impressions without the means of uh, radiation or these things. So I said I, can, I believe in that and it's possible because although I am not an experience but in principle it has to be because there would, would not have been any phenomenal harm, revelation, if it were not possible. Because if revelation was made through ordinary means of physical radiation and things, then any ordinary instrument could, could also catch a revelation being made to a prophet or a holy man. And that is a system to which these ordinary people have no access. So there must have, have there has to be some system which should be extraordinary. So this is why I believe in it. And they said, all right, are you ready for experiments? I, I said, yes, let's try it. I do not blame, I have not had any experience. But all right, let's try it. So they said, you go out to a safe distance where you cannot hear us. And we will think of something, all of us, and make a circle. When, you, when somebody goes out and calls you, you come and sit in the middle of the circle and uh, Imagine or concentrate on what we want to convey to you. So I went out and after a while somebody came to call me back 
and I went and sat in the center. So I emptied my mind of all thought. I didn't make any effort, it was just emptied and sat there. And suddenly I thought I should uh, undo the laces of my shoes. So I started undoing the laces of my shoes. I did, uh, I undid, did both the laces of my shoes. And sat there and suddenly somebody cried, Yes, go ahead. I said, what do you mean by go ahead and the whole process was stopped. They said, we had thought you were wearing your shoes fully laced. And we had thought that we will convey to you, undo your laces and take the shoes off. <laughs> so you did half of it and not the next half. So somebody became impatient and said, all right, go ahead and do it. <laughs> so that is my personal experience. I know this happens. And uh, my late father, Hazrat Muslim Mahmood, had that neck and I also written that in his life history. Some, many times, so often happened that we were scared of sitting close to him because he would, he would read our thoughts. <laughs> but he was glad once. If somebody thought of a mistake, he would say, all right, don't do it. You know? <laughs> Things like that. And I was terrified many times. <laughs> Sitting in his company. <laughs> but uh, can I start again? Oh, um, but do you think it's against Islam to pick up thoughts of other people, what they're thinking of, and go? Pick up, pick up thoughts. No, from other people. You don't pick up. <laughs> no, but uh, they come to you. No, no, but I've tried. <coughs> but I've practiced myself. That's why I could put this question forward to you. Please. <coughs> no, no, there's nothing wrong with it. No, no, if, if you science. if you really concentrate on one person and they not know it yet, surely you can pick it up and once you or twice... You can pick it up but you may be wrong. No, no, but once or twice, maybe a hundred times, right? You have to try yourself and um, if all the hundred times you are right, okay? And then um, you have to trust it yourself. And you are keeping into the fire of the other. <laughs> <laughs> Is that against it? If you it intentionally to keep into the private life of others, that is wrong. Yes, but where it helps you. So the manner is not, I mean, the uh, process is right. There is nothing wrong with the process. But if the question will be decided how you inquire and how you, why you inquire. For example, uh, television is good. In, uh, in a sense, that is neither good nor bad in fact. You can see a very good program, a healthy program, a mind building, a health building program, and you can also see a rotten program which will destroy you morally. So how can one say a television is bad? It is how it is implied. So if you have a gift from Allah and you employ it to the detriment of mankind, it is bad. If you employ it for the goodness, for example, if you sit in a company which are bad people and you think of good things of life, of Allah, of, uh, you know, things which would improve the lot of that society, naturally this is a very good employment for your, for, uh, your gift which Allah has given you. So try to do that. 